when I was preparing this talk, I called a few of my relatives to ask them what leaving a legacy behind meant to them. Most of their responses were all linked to monetary gifts. And that because as soon as we mention the word legacy, we think about money or cars. It is my belief that living your life experiences or your moral values are one of the best ways to be remembered. Amadou Ampateba, an African storyteller said once, un vieillard qui meurt est une bibliothèque qui brûle, which could be translated in English as, every old man that dies is a library that burns down. In this quote, Amadou Ampateba emphasizes on the fact that the passing away of an elder could be considered as the loss of a unique set of knowledge. And yet, an archive of that unique set of knowledge and wisdom remains in the minds and hearts of those that are left behind. How many of us in this room have a memory of someone we have known in our own lives whose actions have tremendously impacted who we are? Could be one of our teachers, a parent, or one of our elders. Each of these memories are like archives of books we refer to in our actual life to find guidance, inspiration, or advice. To put it in the context of my talk today, each of these memories are like footsteps or maps to a journey left behind by those who came before us. Today, I will share a few memories of people in my life, how they have shaped me, and how they will inform my own teachings for my own children. So we will call this part, memory one, the value of service. But in order to understand how those memories have influenced the way I present myself to the world, let me tell you a bit about myself. My parents are originally from Guinea and Senegal, and I was raised in Ivory Coast. Growing up, there was a golden rule in our, in our household. We had to only speak Fulani. Fulani is our African traditional dialect. It is a language that is spoken in multiple African country, countries, such as Mali, Burkina Faso, Senegal, Guinea, Mauritania, and some part of Cameroon. It was very important for my father to maintain our Fulani roots especially because we were living in another country where French was the predominant language. My father also encouraged me and my siblings to read African literature to really know and understand the reality of the African continent. As much as my father wanted us to strive in academic studies though, he ensured that we remain connected to the Fulani culture. So how does that translate for me today? As a mom, I feel like it is my turn to pass the torch to my boys by teaching them the Fulani language and appreciating their own background amidst a plethora of other communities here in Canada. Moreover, as a Muslim woman who wears the hijab, I want my boys to understand the importance of respecting forms of spiritual practice and how it is rooted into personal choice, as it was for me. I remember my parents as active members of our community. My father was known as the one who was always ready to help, whether it is helping illiterate adults in the community with administrative paperwork or just sharing life lessons with youngsters. Service for my mom was putting food outside for orphans, as she believed that feeding the less fortunate was one of the highest callings. In my eagerness to carry on the legacy of service, I ran a program here in Calgary for children, for neighboring families, by providing activities for them. I have also worked with the elderly here in Calgary by providing companionship through cooking, knitting, or sewing in order to combat loneliness. I have also experienced the sweetness 
of human connection. For example, I, I met my friend Lana. Lana is a wheelchair, rugby, and basketball player. We have developed a friendship through reciprocal acts of service. Our friendship have eventually e evolved into helping each other in our endeavors, which is why she is here today to support me. I have, thank you. I have also applied this um, value of service here at Bovari College by volunteering through the Intercultural Center for the Brown Bagging Kids. My desire to pass on the legacy of service include taking my young boys with me while I volunteer whenever I can. This brings to life the value of service through action. You see, teaching our values is what plant the seeds, but exercising our values is what will allow that seed to germinate into the fruits of memories that our children will consume into their own lives, which bring me to the memory number two. When I graduated from high school, my father passed away and I decided to go into a suburban area located in the northern of Abidjan, which is the capital of Ivory Coast. It was there that I met an old and wise Quranic instructor. We would hold discussions on education and its absolute importance for the future of women. He was so dedicated on educating his daughters. He also promoted the importance of lifelong learning. And in his late 70s, he opted to start learning the French language. The memory of seeing him learn to, to write his own name is a striking visual to me to never stop learning, regardless of your age or your status. You see, as an elder, revered for his community leadership and jurisprudence. He didn't need to learn to elevate his rank, but his desire to learn was rooted in his understanding of his own humility. He recognized that taking, taking the initiative first by learning the language would be more effective. Years later, here I am in Canada, adopting these same principles in my own life. My own plans include becoming a teacher, making the value of learning integral not only in my own life, but also for my future students. For my boys, I emphasize both oral and written traditions of learning. I share with them stories that were passed down from my father. Learning is not just in the form of books, but the actions of people that we see or meet or adapt in our inner circles or the stories that we hear from our elders or our parents. For that reason, my husband and I make sure that our boys are exposed to a diverse source of learning and eventually become fluent in Fulani, English, and French. This way, the value of learning within our family will continue to have new volumes written as my own children add to the wealth of intergenerational knowledge. So what do we take from these stories? The lessons I have taken from my life experiences can be really summarized into two concepts. Concept number one, we all have something to pass on. Never underestimate the power of your own life experiences and your wisdom. A past failure for you may become a key piece of knowledge for the advancement of another today. Concept number two, we all need to acknowledge how our own journeys can light and illuminate the legacies of others to come. Leaving a legacy behind has a lot to do with actions. My parents and my mentor have paved a path of excellency in education, community service, and a strong sense of self-identity. And remember before you leave this room, 
every step we take in our lives is like a book that tells a specific story. So take the time to reflect. What story are you writing for yourself now? And what archive of that story will you be leaving behind? Thank you.